Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about how to read your cholesterol. Okay? So, what's the function of cholesterol? Well, it acts as a cell membrane coating. So, every single cell in the body, every single cell has a coating of cholesterol. So, we need that. Uh, all the outside of your skin has a cholesterol layer. Uh, cholesterol is needed to make hormones, specifically uh, stress hormones and certain other hormones for anti inflammation. Uh, also, it, it's involved in brain activity, and so when you don't have enough cholesterol, it can affect your memory. And that's why one of the side effects of statin drugs, which lower the cholesterol, is memory loss. Okay? There's many other functions, but those are the top three big functions. Okay? Cholesterol is also needed to make vitamin D. It's also needed to make bile, B-I-L-E, to actually help you dissolve fats. Now what's funny to me is that you know we talk about good and bad cholesterol, like HDL is called good cholesterol. You can kind of think of the H as like a healthy cholesterol. And then LDL is supposedly the bad cholesterol, like if there's two types of cholesterol, but there's really no such thing as two different types of cholesterol. It's really one cholesterol that's inside of both of these little guys. This stands for high density lipoproteins, okay? This is low density lipoproteins. Do you notice I didn't say cholesterol? In order to transport cholesterol, which it doesn't mix well with water or blood, you have to put it in a protein capsule. And that's what these are. These are little tiny shuttles that deliver cholesterol in certain directions in the body. So let's talk about like let's talk about the LDL first. So we have this outer covering of this protein, okay, that surrounds the cholesterol. And the purpose of the LDL is to transport the cholesterol from your gut and liver to your intestinal tract and then right to the blood. So basically LDL takes the cholesterol from the liver, puts it in the blood, and then from the blood it goes to the rest of the tissues. Okay? That's what LDL does. Now HDL takes the excess cholesterol that the LDL put in there and removes it and brings it back to the liver. And then the liver can actually dismantle it and take care of it. So basically we have this exchange between cholesterol coming out of liver, right here, and cholesterol going into the liver. And we need that balance. So when you see that you have high levels of bad cholesterol, you know, doctors instantly give you a drug to shut it down. But what I want to do is I want to teach you what's behind that, like what's causing that problem. We want to use this as a little indicator light to tell us that there's some problem inside our body. Normally, the LDL should be below 130. Now, in 2004, a group of 15 doctors, panels of doctors, that they basically decided to lower the LDL to 100 to even... Uh, as low as 70 for certain people that are risk factors, okay? So what they did is they adjusted the numbers, they changed the normal values, and put 8 million people on cholesterol medication overnight. That's what they did. Well, then we find out, and I put a link down there, that a lot of these doctors had um, ties to the drug companies. Yeah, I know. Surprise, right? So unfortunately, people are freaked out about if that LDL is too high. And so we'll get more into that, but basically that's what it does. So LDL um, takes the cholesterol and drives it into the, the blood and then out to the tissues, and then HDL takes the excess, cleans it up, and puts it back into the liver. A normal HDL is in a male body should be at 40 or greater, okay? And a female body at 47 or greater. Now, let's talk first about, let's talk uh, about triglycerides for a second. What is triglycerides? Those, basically, those are blood fats. And basic triglycerides are converted sugars, okay? So triglycerides are used to transport excess carbohydrates. So if you have high triglycerides, I know for a fact you have too much sugar in your body because the hormone insulin is the converting hormone that makes triglycerides high. So we want about 150 or less. That's the value for our triglycerides. We don't want them greater than 150. Um, it's very easy to get to change this 
and it's simply by getting rid of sugar out of the diet. Now they also talk about total cholesterol to HDL ratios and all these different uh, calculations. I don't like that. I like uh, the triglyceride to HDL ratio the best. This will give the best indicator of your risk for heart disease. And basically you just divide your total cholesterol by, I'm sorry, total triglycerides by the HDL and that gives you the ratio. And if it's greater than six, there's a problem. If it's two or less, it's good. So we want it to be lower, okay? So that's kind of a ratio you can look at. Um, but really, in reality, there's really no such thing as good or bad cholesterol. It just, because you need cholesterol. You cannot live without cholesterol. You just want the exchange there. Um, I would say about 99.99% of the time, just by cleaning up the sugar, the carbs, the bread, the pasta, the alcohol, you can clean this up so fast and bring it back to normal ranges. Okay, There are genetic uh, cholesterol issues, but it's very rare. It's not as common as you think. But if you do have a genetic uh, tendency to have high cholesterol, even if you had 350, the studies show that there's still no risk for heart disease. So they so for them to put you on statins right away is a big mistake because there's no study that shows that it's actually going to create a problem for you, especially if these other things are working fine. In fact, I never ever look at total cholesterol as anything. I ignore total cholesterol and because they did drop that down to 200. It used to be like 225. But even if it's like 350, if it's less than 350, I'm not going to worry about it if these other things are working fine. And it's very rare for it to go up if you're off sugars. Usually it'll come right down. The other point I want to make is that 75% of the cholesterol in your body right now is made by your own body. It's made by your liver and the cells. Your liver makes 2,000 milligrams of cholesterol every single day and the rest of the cells make 1,000 milligrams. And only 25% of the cholesterol in your body comes from diet. Okay, The rest comes from your body making it. So that might shift your viewpoint because if you eat less, your body makes more. If you eat more, your body makes less because we have this feedback mechanism. Um, so I just wanted to kind of cover some of these basics and kind of give you the simplicity of what it is so you're not freaked out about it. But for people to be put on medication when they should be working, like this is what most people do. If it's high, they go on a low-fat diet. It's usually high carbs. They go on medication. They go on exercise. But they never cut out the sugar. Okay? All right. So go ahead and apply this information. Make, put your comments below. Thanks for watching.